in my life, I've lived uh, a significant number of places. Uh, every now and then, somebody in New York says, oh yeah, you're from the West Coast. And I said, well, I've lived on all three coasts. And he said, what do you mean three coasts? Well, I said, well, there's East Coast, West Coast, and Gulf Coast. And I was born on the Gulf Coast. The, the first place I tasted salt water was the Gulf Coast. <laughs> you know? In that period, the art world's philosophical rhetoric was art for art's sake. And um, um, I knew that wasn't really appropriate. I understood it as rhetoric. People were trying to push away from the interest in content in art in that period. Uh, in any case, uh, I had the intuition uh, and maybe intellect enough to know that from studying history, art had been made for any reasons that human beings wanted to at any place in any time. It's just a fact. And I wanted, from a personal point of view, to um, uh, involve the, the life that I had been exposed to and living and the realities of it. And topically, uh, 1960s, the beginning of the recent aspect of the civil rights movement, and so it made sense to be able to use it. Well, the rhetoric was really against that. I had only been at the Nasher a couple of months when I made a trip to Los Angeles, and I saw a lot of the exhibitions associated with Pacific Standard Time, um, including Now Dig This at the Hammer Museum, and there was a selection of works by Mel, including a number of the pieces in this room, and I was just blown away. Um, and I kept coming back to them and back to them. And I think the thing that really got to me about them, I knew his work a little bit. I'd seen a piece here and there in New York, and I knew his, some of his works on paper. But one of the things I'd really studied and written about before is mid-century art, especially kind of neo-data and assemblage. And his work, I could see connections to that tradition, but it also just looked like something I'd never seen before. And it just really, it just really floored me. And I thought, well, I'm at a sculpture center. <laughs> I decided I didn't want the work limited to the formalist criticism that was functional in the art world. And I knew if I named them something dynamic, they'd have to deal with that. The most dynamic negative I could think of was lynching. So in counter response, I call the pieces the lynch fragments. So, but that's a collective title. Each piece has its own uh, individual title. Uh, I like to work, I like for it to be direct. Um, uh, I would say that part of the approach is like real improvisation in music. In sculpture, well, it, improvisation may, in order to accomplish a piece that way, may take a year. Improvisation in the music is there's the thought and the execution, and it's less than a millisecond, you know. But this, that's the only word I have that uh, fits the idea of intuiting an idea and then trying to make it manifest. The first out of the country place uh, was really uh, Mexico, which was very important the Mexican muralists and that, and, and their principles and their arguments about social conditions were very important. And then the next one was going to Africa and uh, same kind of uh, dynamics, but different in form. And so each place has given me something. When I got to Los Angeles and uh, in the university, uh, Los Angeles City College, I studied art. That was my major. And it continued at the same time I was very serious about athletics. And, well, in art, it takes a long time to get old, but in athletics, it doesn't take long. <laughs> so, a few years, and you, you, your body tells you, well, do something else. <laughs> you know. By circumstance or happenstance, if you will, was an awareness that as a sculptor working in three dimensions, uh, so simply a, a frontal view, a frontal uh, idea of what you're doing wasn't sufficient. And somehow I coordinated in my head all those plays and things that were diagrammed on the, the chalkboard for football or basketball. Um, they were all flat 
you know, and linear on that surface, but they indicated three-dimensional horizontal activity. And it's the same thing that choreographers do for dance, you know. But the other thing I think I got from sports, I'm sure it could have come from elsewhere in life, but that is, if you want to be excellent at it, you had better really concentrate and work hard on it. So if anybody thinks this last 50 years was 50 years of la-di-da, no. <laughs> Peace there, I think that's Mojo for 1404. That's my family's address in Houston. You know. uh, but a Mojo is uh, the equivalent of a good luck charm or a device. Of, and the idea of modifying fate or resisting uh, in relation to how life is, is a perennial human creative uh, device for invention. You know, human beings overcome obstacles which they've never encountered by inventing ways to, to do that. And that happens within painting, within sculpture, within drawing, within anything.